Good morning. Welcome to Willow Meadows. We're so glad you're with us today. Uh, and, and for you who are at home, I want to say just a quick word to you who are at home watching us online. Uh, first of all, welcome. And uh, I just want to thank you. you. You are so consistent and so faithful. And you are joining us every week. And, um, and we just appreciate that so much. I know that is hard. And I know uh, many of you w want to be here, would like to be here, and the, the circumstances just don't allow. And what I want you to know is that uh, you are still very much a part of our family. And we love you. We miss you. But the other thing I want to tell you is that, uh, uh, you know, as we lead worship and as I'm preaching, I still see you. I mean, I still see your faces. And actually, I still see you in the places where you usually sit. Um, and you are very, very uh, much a part of our family and all that God is doing. God is using you. God is blessing us through you as we pray that God is blessing you through us. And uh, just wanted to give you a special word. Uh, we love you and um, are so thankful for you and how consistent you are in joining us in worship. So thanks for that. And thanks for you who are so consistent in joining us here uh, in person. We are so glad uh, to have you here every Sunday. Uh, it is going to be a great day of worship, and we are grateful that we are all worshiping together, both uh, online and here in the sanctuary. Would you stand and join me in our responsive call to worship found on the screens or in your worship guides? Come, let us bow down and worship the King of kings, the Lord of lords. At his birth, the angels proclaimed it. He is the Wonderful Counselor, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Prince of Peace. Through his teaching and his life, we have learned how to live to God. By his death and resurrection, we have been saved and claimed by God as God's witnesses to God's eternal love. join us in singing, You Are My Vision.
You're my inheritance now and always. You and you only, the first in my heart. High King of Heaven, my treasure. among those around you. If you're at home, send a text message, an email, or make a phone call. May the peace of Christ be with you. If you would make your way back to your seats, you may be seated in your seats. We're going to continue with our mission moment. As many of you know, November is our Missions Emphasis Month. 
Uh, today we're going to highlight one of our ministries that we support, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, or CBF. CBF serves in 19 countries around the world. They partner with churches like ours to share the good news both in word and deed with the people most marginalized in the world. Their theme this year is Presence Matters. Presence Matters. And because Presence Matters, CBF missionaries minister long-term in the communities they serve to cultivate beloved community, bear witness to Jesus Christ, and seek transformational development among the people and place otherwise forgotten or forsaken. CBF missionaries serve in three primary contexts, global poverty, global migration, and the global church. Like many organizations in the church and churches, COVID-19 pandemic impacted CBF. They were hit hard financially. We want to be faithful in our support and prayers for CBF. Even though they have been impacted by the pandemic, the needs of the people they serve have only intensified. We are grateful to be able to help people who are hurting through our missions offering. Our gift will be able to ensure that missionaries will stay firmly rooted in places where God has called them because presence matters. And if you want to know more about CBF, please check out their website at cbf.net. Now I'd like to show you a message from CBF missionaries, former members of our church. We are Lita and Rick Sample, CBF field personnel. We have been serving among internationals here in the San Francisco Bay Area for over 19 years, arriving in 2002. When we arrived when, almost 20 years ago, we really felt that God was calling us to serve among Afghan refugees and immigrants in this area. 60,000 Afghans live in the Tri-City area, and we knew that we had a calling to be able to present the gospel to those that had little access when they were in Afghanistan. Now it's taken us years of building trust and relationships and uh, connecting with people, organizations, so that we can be part of this community, well known, respected, cared for. We enjoy our Afghan friends. We love being part of this community. We know that God has brought us here for a specific purpose. But over the past few years, God has really made a difference in this community. And now things have come back around. Because of our long-term presence here in this community, we are well positioned to be ready to respond to the needs of the many Afghan refugees coming out of Afghanistan due to the crisis there this summer. We are so grateful for your prayers and for your financial support through CBF's Offering for Global Missions because presence matters. for the samples and many missionaries around the world who are serving uh, our Lord in places that are challenging. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're grateful for our missions offering. We ask that you would bless it, multiply it, use it for your kingdom work. We're grateful for the church and its impact around the world by sending even missionaries like the samples to go work with people who have never heard the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray that you would, be a that you would bless the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, that CBF will continue to do the work that you call them to. Thank you for their consistency to stay in a place and build relationships and model Jesus every day so that those who do not know Christ will know Christ. So thank you for our partnership. Thank you for using this small church and this little place to be the hands and feet of Christ. We are grateful that you chose us to do ministry with you. And so we thank you for this month as we share testimonies of ministries that we partner with, for the opportunity to give and support your work that's happening around the world. We ask blessings upon us, our offering, and CBF, that your kingdom may come here on earth as it is in heaven. In Christ, amen. 
At this time, we invite all of the children forward for the children's sermon. It's good to see you all today. I brought my purse with me today. Now, I keep a lot of things inside my purse, but today I want to show you the most important thing in here, other than my cell phone, and it is these. This is my keychain. Do your moms and dads have a keychain? Yes. yes. So I've got a key on here for my house, I've got one for my office. This big one is for my car, right? And I always try to keep my keychain in the same place. And the reason for that is if I misplace my keys, even if it's only for a minute, my husband will tell you I tend to get very anxious. And the reason for that, come on up, Jack. The reason for that is that I have to have my keys for all of the important doors that I need to open every day. So while we're discussing keys, what if somebody told you that there was a key that would open a door to a life of joy and fulfillment? Most of us would be pretty excited to go through that door, wouldn't we? Well, Jesus says that key is called the kingdom of God. He talked a lot in the Bible about the kingdom of God. And a lot of people didn't know what he was talking about. They were very confused. In fact, in today's Bible story, Jesus was having a conversation with the governor of Judea named Pilate. And Pilate was worried because he thought that Jesus was going to try to set up a government right there on earth. Maybe we can pick up our toys here, yeah. Okay. Um, so Jesus said, no, the kingdom of God is not a physical place like my office or my house. The kingdom of God is a spiritual place. The kingdom of God exists whenever God is at rule inside of our hearts. So when you and I make it our number one priority to love God and to let him lead our lives, then that's where the kingdom of God is. So why don't we say a quick little prayer and then we'll go to the sermon tables. Dear God, thank you for each one of these boys and girls. Thank you that you have invited us to be part of your kingdom and help us to let you be in charge of our lives. Amen. In your order of worship, you'll see our prayer list. As we get closer to Thanksgiving, um, Many on this list we are very grateful for. And today we want to pray on, for them and for our church and for one another. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, you are grateful. You are a God who works, moves, and loves. You have brought your kingdom here to earth through your son, Jesus Christ. And he continues to move in our lives. Father, we have some beautiful names on our list. Names that have impacted us. Names who have been faithful to your kingdom work. And so we lift these names up to you. We ask that you would bless them 
you would comfort them, you would heal them. We thank you that you give us this time to pray on their behalf, to pray for one another, to pray that you will have your way among us. As we continue to worship this morning, reveal to us your kingdom. Reveal to us what you desire for our lives. Reveal to us how you want to use us to bring the kingdom to earth. And then help us to be faithful in that calling. Help us to love one another, to love our neighbor, and to love you. That those who do not know Christ, those who are suffering, those in need of Christ, will experience the amazing grace that we find in Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Would you stand and let us continue to worship together, singing our glory medley.
This year we have been driven by the theme, enough. Even when we've had enough of pandemics and conflict and layoffs and supply chains and masks, I mean, you name it, we have probably had enough of it. Even when we've had enough, we know that God is enough and I am enough and there is enough. In fact, this fall, we've been discussing how in Christ, we have more than enough. We've looked at several texts in the Gospel of Mark to see how in Christ, we have more than enough to love and give and know. Today, we close out our series in the Gospel of John and see that in Christ, there is more than enough to live. If you have a Bible nearby, please turn to John chapter 18. In Christ... There is more than enough to live. What, what a great word to close out this series on. It, it feels like that all we have gone through these last couple of years has taken a lot out of us. Really, what it's taken out of us is a lot of life. And I think we are ready to live again. And today we're going to be reminded that we can live again because in Christ we have more than enough to live. Even if we're stuck at home more than we want or even if we are still having to live inconvenienced lives, whatever we are facing, we have more than enough to live. Ironically enough, today's text that shows us we have more than enough to live takes place at the end of Jesus' life. Jesus was arrested and was first taken to Annas, and then he was taken to Caiaphas, the high priest. And then Caiaphas sent Jesus over to Pilate. Pilate was the Roman governor of the region, and he was the only one who had the authority to sentence Jesus to death. And that's exactly what the religious leaders wanted to happen. Our text is Pilate's questioning of Jesus. John 18, starting in verse 33. Pilate then went back inside the palace summon Jesus and ask him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priest handed you over to me. What is it you've done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Pilate did not care about Jesus. And Pilate did not care about Jesus' message. And Pilate did not care about the Jewish religious leaders. Pilate cared about the possibility of civil unrest. The disruption of his easy life. And the possible disappointment of his superiors, which would have led to the end of his easy life. There almost seems to be this sense of exasperation as Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And he didn't get a straight answer from Jesus because Jesus didn't see this the way Pilate did. If he had, I think Jesus would have been overcome with fear about what lay ahead. Jesus answered Pilate by saying, my kingdom is not from this world. He didn't see a world limited and constrained by the power of a Roman governor. For that matter, he didn't see a life that ended on the cross or in the tomb. That didn't mean that Jesus somehow looked forward to the cruel death that awaited him. Absolutely, he did not. It doesn't mean that his pain wasn't real. It doesn't mean that he was in some kind of denial or disregarded what lay ahead for him. It just means that Jesus knew the cross was not all there was. Sunday was coming. He had hope. Jesus knew that he had more than enough to live even after his own death. Jesus knew he had more than enough to live a life bigger than his own circumstances. The reality of God's work and God's power is much bigger than our immediate circumstances, even if our circumstances are as bad as they can possibly be. God's work and God's power offer us a chance to live courageously 
in the larger reality of God's kingdom, rather than be held captive to the small, bleak reality of what's going on right now. The immediate state of affairs is not the whole story if you are in Christ. God is always doing something bigger that leads us to wholeness and hope. We have more than enough to live a life bigger than our circumstances. The key is following Jesus' example in our text. We need to be able to see things differently. We need to be able to look at things a little bit differently. We need to see the bigger picture. In Christ, we can see things differently because in Christ, we are looking for different things. In Christ, we can see beyond the immediate circumstances and look for something more and see some things others might not see. In Christ, I am not only confined to look for what is easiest or most convenient or what works out best for me, because my life is so much more than this circumstance I am facing right now. Because in Christ, I'm looking for Jesus. I am looking for chances to minister and help and love. I'm looking to see where God is at work and how I might join God in that work. When Hurricane Harvey hit, Elias had been on the job for five days. Five days Elias had been on staff here. And the Garcia's neighborhood was evacuated because of the flood. And they spent several days sheltering at First Baptist Church Richmond. So when when we had to make our first immediate response, Elias couldn't get anywhere near us because he was trapped in Richmond. And of course, all we did at first was just respond to the immediate needs in front of us. We just kind of, you know, met one at a time, went from this tragedy to that tragedy to that tragedy. And of course, so many of you were a part of that. And that was really all we could do those first few days. But when Elias was finally able to be on the scene, what struck me was how differently he saw things. He saw a much bigger picture. I mean, clearly there were immediate needs and immediate tragedies that need to be met, absolutely. But he also saw that this was an opportunity to minister deeply to the community. This was a chance to show the city an accurate picture of God's love and compassion. He helped create partnerships in ministry that went well beyond our church and went well beyond our little corner of Houston. He saw something more that allowed us to do so much more and see God at work in so many more places and join God at work in so many more places. What he saw and led us into allowed our little church to join God in that work and allowed our little church to be a city leader in Harvey response just because he saw things differently. He saw a bigger picture beyond the immediate circumstances. That's what it's like when we are in Christ. We see things differently. We see a a bigger picture. We see a a, a broader canvas of the work of God. And seeing things differently is the difference between being overcome with fear or being overcome with life. Because of Christ and all that Christ has done for us through his life, death, and resurrection. Because of Christ, when things get scary, we don't have to live in fear or respond out of fear, or be overcome by fear. Like Jesus in our text, we can understand the gravity of what we face, but at the same time, we can know that our circumstance is not all there is. It's not the final word. We can see this bigger picture because in Christ, we have more than enough to live a life bigger than our circumstances. That's why Jesus could face his own cruel death and see the kingdom of God. And we can do the same through the power of God's Spirit. In writing about the resurrection of Christ and our own resurrection in Christ, the Apostle Paul wrote these words in 1 Corinthians 15. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. 
For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God... He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us that when we are facing the worst, when we are even facing our own death, death does not have the final word. It doesn't have the sting we thought. It doesn't have the final victory. Jesus has the final victory, and so do we through him. And it is that victory, it is in that victory that we find more than enough to live. Listen to how Paul closed out chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. That is the description of life that is more than enough. Paul, a man who faced death many times, tells us, with, tells us with confidence that we can stand firm. Nothing can move us from our position in Christ. We can give ourselves fully and completely to the work of the Lord. We can live with passion and purpose. It is an option. It is a choice we can make each day. God is enough And I am enough. And there is enough. And in Christ, we have more than enough. More than enough to love. More than enough to give and to know. And more than enough to live. More than enough to give ourselves fully to the work of God. We don't have to live lives driven by fear and controlled by circumstances. In Christ... We can live a kingdom-centered life and live that life with passion and purpose and hope. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for your word and grateful for these reminders these past few weeks that in Christ we have more than enough to be who you created us to be, to be who you've called us to be. And our prayer is that we might follow the examples you have given us in Christ these last few weeks and live the life you have created us to live. And to recognize that in you we have more than enough to live that life. We are grateful that our life is not dictated by circumstances alone. That our life is not dictated by fear. That our life is not dictated by a a narrow view of our own lives or our own world. But we are grateful today that in Christ we can live lives so much bigger than our circumstances, so much bigger than we ever imagined. Because in Christ we can find you and see your work and join you in that work. We would like for that to be the hallmark of our lives and this church. So we gratefully today thank you that we have more than enough in Christ. And we pray in his name. Amen. I want to give you a chance to take just a moment to respond to God today through, through uh, your time in Bible study this morning, through our time of worship, through the message today. It's just a chance to reflect and pray. If during this time you would like for either Elias or Sarai to, to talk with you, to pray with you, Maybe you'd like to find out more about how to be a a member of our church, how to be a follower of Christ. This is a time for us to share that with you. So let's just take just a few moments and spend in reflection with the Lord.
Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. If you're watching online, we want to thank you for participating in our worship this morning. Next Sunday, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper and just want to remind you to have your ingredients ready for that service next, Wednesday, next Sunday. If you please have, uh, take out your order of worship, you'll see the messenger in the back of our order of worship. I just want to give some highlights. Next um, Sunday's missions emphasis will be focusing on WNBC missions. We'll be sharing stories about the work that we're doing in our community and the ministries that we've started uh, and, and the ministries we're partnering with. Remind you that BIM food drive is this month uh, from the 7th through the 21st. Due to COVID, BIM's drive will be for monetary donations only. Uh, we are not collecting canned foods. We're just asking for monetary donations. If you're given online, you will see how to do that in your order of worship. Go to the mission field donation uh, page and our website. And there you can ask, put in their BIM food drive. If you're writing a check, make sure you put in the memo of uh, BIM food drive. Uh, we're grateful for Eloy and um, for Ryan, for all the work that they do in our community. They serve so many people in the name of Christ and we're grateful for them. Remind you that this Wednesday is our Thanksgiving dinner. If you have not made your reservations, please do so, let me know. Um, we can do that tomorrow as well. Uh, if you would like to bring something, we are short with a salad or a dressing as well as a dessert. I think we're missing one more dessert that we need. Um, I am not cooking the turkeys. That would be swinging doors. So the turkey is going to be really, really good. We'll provide the turkey uh, and, and some of the dressing. And, um, but we were excited about just being together. It's been almost two years since we've been able to sit around the table, have dinner together, and celebrate that all that God's doing in our lives and give him thanks for his many, many, many blessings. Remind you that today is the last day to bring back, bring your boxes. If you forgot to bring those, you can bring them tomorrow morning as well as help us put those boxes together. We will be here at nine o'clock. If you'll come out these doors where you come in for worship, we'll set up the foyer with tables and putting all the boxes together and then we'll get those donated. Grateful for Carla and her leadership in this ministry, something we have been doing for many, many years and we're grateful to continue this ministry. So be here at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll bring you breakfast so you don't have to worry about stopping and getting breakfast and we look forward to serving and getting those boxes together. Uh, birthdays for this week, Bob Evans, Bob Gardner and Lydia Zimzum, uh, Melissa Bailey, Edith Hawkins, Ryan Brock and EJ Garza. Will you please stand for our benediction? 90 years old, that's young. Is there a difference between dressing and stuffing? It's the same thing? Okay, just to, to clarify, we're, we're short on salads like fruit salad and green salad, not salad dressing. Those were put together, so it sounds, so, but we also need stuffing if you want to bring that too. All right, let's join together in our benediction.